uh, in this session, we will um, address the issue of um, review and monitoring. We are looking at uh, review and monitoring in a more generic sense and not specifically with regard to strategy implementation. However, the uh, aspects that are covered during this session can be applied to strategy uh, review too. Our um, learning objectives in this session would be to uh, understand uh, the issue of defining control, understand performance standards, understand how performance is to be monitored and uh, how performance is to be improved. Now, these are being looked at in a generic sense, right? not specifically with regard to strategy review. However, uh, the uh, issues that we handle in this uh, session can be applied to strategy review. Let's look at uh, the issue of control, right? Now, we need to understand that uh, there are several different kinds of control. These different kinds of control apply across the board to different kinds of activities. It does not really matter what is the nature of the activity. The kind of control could, these kinds of control would apply to different activities at different points in time. For instance, look at budgetary control. Now, what, what is uh, the essence of budgetary control? Budgetary control is converting that particular activity Input into uh, inputs and outputs in a financial sense. So, budgetary control is converting the activity into financial terms. Another type of control is stock control. Now, stock control is easily understood when it comes to uh, the issue of physical stocks stock control when it comes to physical stocks is what we understand as inventory control. However, stock control is a concept which is applicable not only to physical stocks, it is also applicable to human stock. Um, Let us say a company which uh, is keeping track of uh, a number of uh, people seeking employment in a particular area, right? Now, that company keeps track of a number of people and keeps them on the bench as it were. Now, keeping people on the bench is an activity to which you can apply the concept of stock control. Just as you apply stock control to physical goods and use inventory control mechanisms, in quite the same way, stock control as a concept can be used to control the uh, availability and control the release of human material. Then we have uh, operations control. Now, operations control is typically understood in a manufacturing uh, context. However, this is a type of control which can be applied across the board regardless of the nature of the operation. For historical reasons, operations control is understood in the manufacturing context. But operation control is not restricted to the manufacturing context. It could be applied in any kind of operation. And then we have quality control. This is the control of quality of the output. Here again, regardless of the particular activity where quality control is being applied, the principles of quality control would remain the same. Its application would vary depending on the nature of the activity. So, what we need to appreciate in when we talk about 
control is that there are four broadly different kinds of control. Right. Now, um, let's look at uh, the issue of uh, performance standards. Okay. It's easy to understand performance standards as the E factors of performance. The E factors of performance, to begin with, is effectiveness. Performance in any area, performance across the board, one important criterion is effectiveness. Now, what does effectiveness mean? Effectiveness means to what extent is the objective of the function being met. Right? So, effectiveness is all about meeting the objective. The second uh, factor of performance is economy. Economy is a question of how resources are used. Resources relate to uh, time, relate to cost, relate to the use of uh, manpower, the use of scarce materials. So resources are of various kinds. And the concept of economy applies to each kind of resource. Efficiency. Efficiency is the third E factor of performance. As we saw in one of the earlier sessions, efficiency is a combination of effectiveness and economy. Performance must give effectiveness. Performance must be effective. And it must also be economical. So when you combine if effectiveness and uh, economy, you get efficiency. Because efficiency is a question of output by input. Right? Now, output by input, output goes up when effectiveness goes up. Input goes down when economy goes up. And therefore, efficiency goes up. Then there is a the question of elegance. Right? Elegance is a very important uh, factor. It's a very important factor of performance because uh, the same thing can be done in a crude manner or it can be done in an elegant manner. And everybody appreciates elegance. Right? It's, it's a common human trait to appreciate elegance. So, anything which can be done elegantly should be done elegantly. And uh, the fifth factor of performance, the fifth E of performance is ethicality. This is a relatively recent entrance to uh, performance standards. Of course, um, it is true that uh, several uh, performance indicators change historically but um, the issue of ethicality has assumed much greater importance in recent times. Uh, we um, looked at, uh, uh, we mentioned in one of the earlier sessions the case of uh, how Union Carbide, uh, the accident at Union Carbide in uh, Bhopal, the inefficiency displayed by Union Carbide at Bhopal resulted in its shares in the United States dropping by 30%. Right? This was really an issue of ethicality, not an issue of money. The shareholders in the US felt that the company's behavior at Bhopal was not ethical. So ethicality is a very important aspect of performance. One way of... Uh, studying performance is the method study. Right? Now, method study is a generic term. It indicates a particular way in which uh, the issue can be approached. 
it uh, method study involves a uh, systematic recording and critical examination of ways of doing work to find more effective ways. This is the crux of method study. Let's look at the various steps involved in uh, method study. The first step is to put down the terms of reference. This is a very critical step because the terms of reference put down what is the objective of that study. Right? So, every method study must have a very clear objective. Are we talking of uh, improving parameter 1 or are we talking of improving parameters 1, 2 and 3? Right? Now, this must be very clear. Therefore, step 1, terms of reference is critical. Step 2 is investigate. Investigate the existing method, right? Investigate it thoroughly in all aspects. Step 3 is to record it. This is very important because uh, very often this, the investigation which is done by one set of persons, unless it is adequately recorded, unless it is completely recorded, that investigation is not really available to others. In order that the investigation can be made available to others in its complete form, it's important that it should be recorded fully. Then there's a question of analyzing the information. You develop an alternative and install that uh, alternative. Right? So, this is the broad approach which method study adopts.